Hey YouTube, back again. I've been gone for a minute. This is a quick video. I'm gonna try my best not to be rent, but I um, spent two hours at the doctor's office today, and just oh, just I don't know. I had to do some X-rays, and I know that I'm gonna have eventually have to have shoulder surgery, but I asked them to show me copies of these X-rays, and let me show you the one. Can't figure out what um. Look at that. Mm. You see that? That's my shoulder with this prosthesis coming out of there. But I can't figure out what this thing on my real page looked like a paper clip and then it looked like a washer down further. I don't know. But that's the prosthesis in my right shoulder. But he was telling me. Uh, how bad it looked and how because he did surgery he did this surgery back in 2011 and then he did a surgery on my left shoulder uh, four years later but he didn't have to put a prosthesis in the left shoulder so it's not good he was telling me that they would have to go in and do a reverse reversal on his shoulder and put updated hardware in there, pull the whole prosthesis out, and just do the whole thing over. I said, damn, y'all didn't tell me that was going to happen when you did that in 2011, but that's just the way it is with these uh, artificial limbs or whatever. But I'm just going to show y'all something else. If you look on this x-ray, right, I can't find my hand, right there in my neck, that's a part of the plate and the screws is in my neck so that's my shoulder right there but I got plates and screws all in my my neck my lower back it was bionic but he was telling me that <laughs> if I could it, we'll see how the shoulder is gonna do with the injection and if it don't work we'll have to why he has an opening for surgery at the end of September now, the end of August, maybe 1st September. I'm going to read you what he says. He says, reverse ball and socket prosthesis. That's what they're going to have to do. Your diagnosis is massive rotator cuff tear with associated arthritis of the glenoid humeral joint. We also refer to this condition as rotator cuff tear atrophy. Atrophy. Yeah. In, in this condition, a tear in the tendon occurs over a period of years, and because of the altered mechanics of the shoulder, arthritis ensues. This is one of the most difficult problems that we face in treating surgically shoulder surgery. Um, there are a number of alternatives to treatment uh, of this condition. Number one, continue to live with the problem as is. Number two, a reverse ball and socket prosthesis. So, in my situation, this this right shoulder is in bad shape, and also the left. The left shoulder is messing up real bad, but he didn't put a prosthesis in there. So he said, uh, "Miss Giles, you can think about let's attack the left shoulder and and do a prosthesis in it because." Now we don't you don't have to stay in hospital as long and the recovery time is shorter. You say, but if you can endure while the left shoulder is healing, then we can go and back and pick up the right. And that's it. So in other words, I need both shoulders repaired, but I have to decide which one is gonna go first. It's kinda like who gets the birthright, Jacob or Esau. So oh, I don't know. I just it's a little red wagon that I have to pull, and nobody can make this decision for me, but I've had this piece of metal in my shoulder, like I said, two, since 2011, but I, I basically hurt my shoulder back in 1979 when my baby, we were delivering phone books, and my ex-husband had parked the truck on top of a hill, a, a really steep hill, but he dropped me off at the bottom of the hill, and I was putting the telephone books 
uh, at their houses at the lower part, and he would take the higher part. And maybe like 15 minutes after uh, delivering books, I hear him screaming, Mary, Mary. And I look up the hill, and the truck is coming down the hill, but he's running on the side of the truck, kind of behind it. I said, why is he doing that? And my baby is in the truck. But at any time, I said, my baby done knocked the truck out of gear, and he's coming down this hill. Man, I turned into Superwoman. I ran up that hill, got in front of that truck, which was dangerous, but I didn't I didn't know no other way to do it. I slowed that truck down enough to run on the side of it and jump in and turn the wheel where it could jump the curve and land in somebody's yard. But baby, the next day my shoulders were swollen and just sore and I went to the doctor and told me I had shoulder strain and it would be okay. They didn't think any, no, no tears or anything. That's the beginning of my shoulder problem. So doing all this upholstery work didn't help it at all. But, you know, when you're young, you don't, you just don't, you feel pain. You go put some ice on and go back out to fight the next day, another day. So I've been doing this upholstery for over 30 years. So it's just wear and tear on my bone. But. I'm in the valley, and most likely I'm going to go ahead and get this right shoulder fixed because it has a prosthesis in it, and it does hurt worse than the left. But I don't understand. I asked the doctor uh, about the way I think and what was going on in my mind, and I told him the story, and he kind of looked at me. I said, so you're saying I need to see a psychiatrist? He said, well, no, Mary, I just never heard anybody thinking like that. I told him that. Since my right shoulder was messed up so bad, the left shoulder would have to compensate. He had to wash the dishes, wipe the cabinet, and do things because I was in a sling. And the right shoulder picked on the left shoulder and talked about, how, why can't you hold that dish rag? Why can't we, that's why I'm hurting because you don't know how to do nothing. This is the argument that's going on in my head. So... Finally, the when the left shoulder had to have surgery, the right shoulder stopped bothering. And now that this this thing in my head about which arm is doing the most work, they don't argue anymore. It's kind of like a sympathy thing because when you when your shoulder is hurt, you can't use the bathroom like you want to. So the the left shoulder does his best, and the right don't talk about it. If you didn't get it clean, do it over, and all that. So it just they get along and say, we got to do the best we can so we can get through this. So it was just, I don't know. I don't know if anybody else had that problem. If you had uh, a left and a right situation where one arm is weaker than the other one or something. But it did finally get better. Got, it got better when the left side of my shoulder, shoulder got worse. And it was, they both on even keel. But, uh. There was a person that seemed to think they shook a demon out of me. Can you imagine somebody thinking, you're going to shake a demon out of me? And if I do have demons, which I don't think I do, I don't bother nobody. But they call themselves shaking me. They yanked my arm and shook it. I mean, snatched it. And it did hurt. It hurt real bad. That was last year sometime, but I was lucky I had an ice pack, and I had my pain pills, so I just went on by my business and, you know, packed the ice on it, and I said, when I get home, we'll worry about it, because, you know, I have so many other ailments, and I got medication for it, so, but if you think you have the power to uh, eradicate a demon out of somebody, don't put your hands on them. Speak the words, and you can't shake no demon out of nobody. You you fool around and get your clock shook. Somebody will bop you in your head for trying to do that. And if you're that powerful, just uh, speak the words. And uh, then you talk about how I ought to be glad that you didn't cause a plane to crash because you feel sorry for the people on the, on the plane. You know, if you got that power, that kind of power, you should have killed me before I got on the plane. That's what you should have did. 
You ain't got no power. That, yeah, yeah, power, that's, universal laws don't work like that. And here I am, an innocent victim that didn't do what you wanted me to do. That's the problem. I, I didn't do what you wanted. And I didn't back down. And I wasn't trying to uh, encroach your territory. But you're not going to loud talk me and embarrass me in front of a lot of people. That's not going to happen, baby. So you you learn, go learn you a lesson and learn how to develop your so-called powers. Go speak the words and cast out demons. I remember one time we were on a bus, Greyhound bus, years ago, going to uh, Shreveport to gamble, and the bus was packed, and three ladies got on the bus. They were drunk. They were loud and just about to fight over who bought all the alcohol and who drinking the most. The bus driver had headphones on, so he didn't he didn't want to hear none of that. We got about 30 uh, minutes out of the city limits, and these women stood up and were going to go blows. And the aisle on the bus was narrow. It was a Jamaican, uh, J- Jamaican man in the back of the bus, and he got to screaming, Bus driver, please stop! Stop your bus! They're going to fight! I looked back at the man. I said, man, somebody got to do something. Before I knew it, I stood up and I said, peace, be still. I said it with all authority that I had. Do you know these three women, their knees buckled immediately. And they both fell in their seats and went to sleep. We had to wake them up when we got to street for So that's how... I slay my demons. When they get the ran and railing, and I'm not going to get nothing to hit you and jerk you. No, I'm going to speak the word. Just like when we um, we didn't have any lights up there. All I was said, let there be light. 45 minutes later, the lights were back on. So you learn, learn how to speak the word and don't go around talking about how you're going to shake the demons out of people. I guess you didn't know my shoulder was messed up that bad. I'm sure you wouldn't have done that had you known the prosthesis and what was going on me because you did. You you shake me so hard all in my neck was hurt. And then you turn around and say you did it on purpose. You ought to you, ought, you gotta ask somebody for forgiveness. Cause that that what you did is still in your little red wagon. It's gonna be there until you straighten it up. And I ask for forgiveness from somebody. Me or who, I know you did me wrong because you hurt me. But like I say, my shoulder was already messed up. And then you you aggravated it. Man, I tell you, but the people who claim to have so much power, uh, a lot, your power comes with age. And it doesn't come by you challenging people and telling them what you're going to do to them. I'm going to send a doll to your house, and I'm going to do this. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to. You don't do that. It's there when you need it. The power is there. You don't have to brag about it or nothing. Just just be nice. That's the thing about it. And, and you'll be surprised at how much power you do have. I remember a long time ago, I I talk about this lady. Her name is Mary. I talk about her, some of my adventures back in in the day. I remember one time, she was telling me a story about this man. I don't know what it was about this man. I had never met the man. And she didn't think that I believed what she said was true. And I said, well, ah, Mary, I don't care. I I don't know the man, so if it's true, it's good. And if not, I don't care. So she said, well, Mary... Don't hang up. Uh, I'm going to dial him right now and put you on three-way. I said, what you doing that for? I, she said, just don't say nothing. And just listen because I'm going to ask him some questions. I just don't remember what, what what caused her to do that. Maybe I just didn't believe what she was saying. So she calls the man and I'm listening to her. What if she asked him? I'm listening to the whole story. They talked about 10 minutes. And he said, bye, Mary. He didn't know I was on the other line, but he hung up the phone. And when he hung up, she said, uh, Mary, did you, now, now you know I'm not lying. I said, well, that ain't important. I say, I didn't, it's whatever. I said, but what bothers me is, why is he talking to you on the phone 
with his eyes closed. Yeah, how he had to say was, Mary, I'm sleepy, call me back. And yet you ain't got to be talking with people with your eyes closed. I don't even know how I knew the man had his eyes closed, but you could sense something sleepy or something. Maybe it was something in his voice. It had to be his voice because I sure couldn't see his face. I said, that bugged me, him talking to you with his eyes closed. Mary says, God damn, how did you know his eyes were closed? I say, uh, he, I could just tell. She said, Mary, I didn't tell you, but this man is blind. His eyes were closed. I said, ooh. She said, I'm getting off the phone because there's something wrong with you. you. You a witch or something. Ain't nobody supposed to do no stuff like that. I said, well, I'm sorry. I, I don't know. It's just that like I could feel that, that he was laying there talking with his eyes closed. I don't know, but that's just one of the most freak things. And I, I don't go around playing them kind of games, but it, it aggravated me that he had his eyes closed, not knowing the man, poor man, was blind. And was laying, and he, but I think it was the fact that he was laying down. That's what bothered me, because I could tell the way he talked that he was laying down. And when you're laying down, I just assume your eyes are closed. That's what aggravated me. But he, he had his eyes closed. But I'm not going to go around and talk about, I'm going to shake no demons out of nobody and shaking and snatching and all that old silly stuff. Oh, man. But I'm going to be all right. I really am because the problem was already there when this woman did jerk me. I'm just going to, and I was going to have to have this revision surgery anyway, but I'm sure that if she, if had she known or remembered, that's the word, remembered. But I had told her before I had this shoulder replacement. And a lot of people don't know what shoulder replacement means. I had told her that, but maybe she forgot, but still. You just you don't touch people. That's the moral of that story. Don't put your hands on people. Just speak the word and go on about your business. Cause you fool around and touch somebody, you're going to touch the wrong person and get your, you're going to get clocked real good. So don't do that no more, okay? He, as a, we were coming up in the day, they say, keep your hands to yourself. <laughs> but anyway, this is what I'm dealing with right now. But I'll know what I'm going to do by the middle of uh uh, August, if I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and have surgery. Uh, baby, they gave me two injections an injection in the left and the right shoulder. And this thing, it hurts like somebody digging in your bones on both arms. So I'm gonna take some uh, uh, pain pills and maybe some ibuprofen or something, and I'll be okay. But y'all, y'all learn how to love each other. That's the message, and be learn how to. Take chastisement, you know, because I I don't mean not to hurt nobody. I don't mean to take over nobody's space and take over your house or steal from you, rape or none of that. But you are not nobody. You're not going to embarrass me in front of nobody because I'm not going to embarrass you in front of nobody. So let's get in the corner and let's talk about what we disagree on. And I'm sure it could be uh, worked out without you getting that upset, but just, just, just learn how to respect people. That's all. But anyway, that's where I am right now. But my shoulder is going to be better. <laughs> I'll talk to you guys later. Bye bye.